How you doing? Good. You remember talking to me earlier? Yes. I'm Dan. Listen, you want to? You want some water or anything? You doing all right? Don't worry. You don't want anything? Just water. You do want some water? Yes, please. Okay. Let me get you some water. I'll be right back. Thank you. Let's I want to kind of talk to you about what's going on with this, okay? And I've been involved with this case from the beginning, okay? And I've seen everything that we have. I've seen all the interviews. And at this point, I know we've come in and we talk to you over and over and over again. We've talked to you in Raleigh. We've talked to you here. And we've always talked about the past. What happened that night? What happened that night? What happened that night? What I want to do is I want to kind of talk to you about the future where we're going from here, okay? Now, I'm, you, you've already heard about all the stuff that we got. I mean, there's no question about what happened that night. We know that it's more than you're telling us. We know that you were involved with, with her death. We know that, okay? So the question is not what happened or anything like that. What we need to understand is going forward, okay, there's going to be a trial. Okay, there's going to be uh, press, there's going to be everybody looking at this. You've seen how these things, they get huge. The media gets involved and everybody's going to have an opinion about what happened. And everybody's going to have an opinion about you and your relationship and what kind of person you are. Okay, mm -hmm. and the thing that, that we're trying to do is, I, I mean, I talked to you earlier, you're a nice guy. I like you. I mean, I think we could be friends, you know, in different circumstances. But here's the thing, you know, there's going to be two narratives going forward, okay? And what I want to do is try to give you the opportunity to kind of tell me more about what narrative actually happened, okay? So what, what we're looking at is, you know, there, there's the one option, okay? And that's the option that you were kind of getting from earlier when, when Tom was in here, which is, you know, you, you planned this? You came down here with the intent purpose to, to hurt Trisha? That you were going to, that you planned to ditch her car here in some calculated way and you plan to go put her in a certain place that she, nobody could find her and all that kind of stuff. And and that sounds pretty bad, right? I mean, that's, I mean you wouldn't agree with that, no. okay? Now, the, the other alternative is that, and like I said, we, we know what happened. We know that, you know, that something beyond what you were telling us happened in the house. But I think the more likely story is having seen, I mean, trust me, I've been here, you haven't seen me before involved in this, but I've seen you, okay, I've done a lot of research in your background, and I know what it was like with Trisha, I know what kind of stuff you went through, I know she had a wild streak when she was younger, I know what she did, and she came after you, you know, in that, that domestic thing that happened before, I know how that started, okay, we've seen the reports, we know how it all happened, we know she went back and said no, the whole thing was made up, because she started, okay, what I think is a more, to me, having known you, having known the background of everything between you and her, everybody's going to have their own opinion. But I, I can see that I think probably what happened was something more like she started something that night. Okay? And, uh, you know, uh, having known what her background was, having known how she treats you, okay, I've seen text messages. I've seen how, what she says to you. Okay, I know what kind of stuff she, she's always bitching at you about stuff. I get that. I see that. Okay, so I could see how that would kind of go that direction that night. All right. So what I want to do is try to try to set the set the stage so that you can actually tell the narrative about what actually happened, which is not that you planned all this. Okay, not that you planned down here to come down here and kill her and send her out in the woods like some sort of mass murderer. I mean, really? I mean, like, like you're going to chop her up in little bits or something like that? I mean, that, that seems kind of ridiculous, okay? It seems far-fetched, like you said, okay? And I don't think you planned all this, 
I don't think you're capable of that. Okay? I think what happens is sometimes things just get out of hand. Okay? You agree with that? Sometimes, you know, people start doing something and, and they cause something to happen. Okay? And I'm not saying you wanted this to happen. All right? But I know you were there when it happened. Okay? What we want to understand is what actually happened that night. Okay? And I know you were there. And I know, I don't believe it was your fault. Okay? So what I imagine something to be, you know, is maybe you guys got in an argument. Maybe it was over the computer. Maybe it was over the gas. Maybe it was over whatever. Okay? Any little nitpicky thing that she's going to get on you about which she always did. I get that, okay? And things got heated, okay? You're down here to try to see your daughter, okay? You're a good dad. You're trying to be down here to spend time with, with somebody that you care about, your daughter. And Trisha's here again, you know, and unfortunately, you know, Faith wants to see Trisha, and Faith is calling for Trisha. I'm sure that doesn't make you feel that good. She's, been, she's trying to spend time with your daughter, okay? Okay. okay. But, but it's, you know, and Trisha came over, but then things started getting kind of, Totally. Okay, and I'm sure she started it. And you didn't want to get involved in that, okay? But if she starts pushing things, she's not going to back up. She, she's, she's unrelenting, okay? I've, I've seen this, okay? I've seen the history. I've seen the background of how this works, okay? So what, what I could see happening is maybe she came at you and, I mean, just defending yourself, she falls. Maybe um, you, you didn't realize how hard you pushed her out of the way, but you're just trying to defend yourself. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you tried to hurt her, but I'm saying that it's clear that something happened there, and that resulted in Trisha getting injured to the point where she, where she was deceased. Okay, and then beyond that, I can see you know, putting myself in your shoes for a minute, okay? I see that you're, you're a hard worker, okay? You've, you've rose through the ranks, you're in the Air Force, you've been there, what, 11, 12 years, you said? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a long time, that's a career. You devoted your life to, to that career, to this country, okay? You've got your daughter to think about, okay? Something happened, it's Trisha's own fault, now she's gone, I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. But what are you gonna do about faith? And like you said, people aren't gonna believe that, that you weren't you know, planning to do this, People aren't going to believe that you weren't intending to hurt her in some way. But sometimes shit just happens. And now here it is. So now you've got to make a choice. Okay? Do you call the cops and roll the dice that we're going to believe your story? Or do you try to do the, you, you go into a little bit of panic mode. And trust me, if I was in the same, I don't know what I would have done. Okay? I couldn't even imagine being in that position. But I can understand going into that, that panic mode of, holy shit, what do I need to do now? And so your first plan, I mean, you told us that your plan was that you were just going to take her back to the house and you were going to leave her there, which I understand because she's going to be back by her house and people are going to find her and, you know, then maybe maybe they'll maybe they'll look other where, other places, you know what I mean? And, and I understand that, okay? And that's what you told us. That was, that was kind of your first thought. But that's probably when you saw that Joshua was still home. So, and, and now you're not going to run the risk of him coming out when, when this is all going on. Because, I mean, that's, that's not going to look well for you at all, right? I mean, if Joshua comes out and sees all this, he's not going to understand. He's obviously going to think that you planned this and did this intentionally. So, so now we're going to go back to the house, okay? And, of course, Trisha, being the way she is, there's no gas in the car. Typical Trisha, and I give up. I mean, come on. I mean, how how much how hard is it to go fill up a gas tank? I mean, really, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. You got to think ahead about this type of stuff. I never let my gas my gas tank go below a quarter of a tank. That's me, you know. But I pay attention to that stuff. My wife she'll run that gas tank out all the time. And then next thing you know, I got to go out in the middle of the night because I got to run and get groceries or something. And I'm also getting gas because she didn't think ahead about it. Okay. So so now. Well, obviously, you can't go to the gas tank, the gas station in her car because she's in the car. I mean, that's, that's not going to look good, right? So you head back to the house, and you do the only thing you can think of is, is hopefully somebody has some gas there, right? And we, we confirmed that. We talked to everybody. And, yeah, you did. You tried to get some gas at the house. 
and then you decide that you're just going to have to go get gas. But now you're going to take your own car, obviously, because you don't want to be in her car. So, I mean, that's all confirmed, and that, and that makes perfect sense, okay? So, and then now you're going to have to go to plan B, which is, unfortunately, you're going to have to take her somewhere else because you can't risk somebody seeing you with, with her in the car, right? Because that's going to be too hard to explain. And it is, and now we're in this position. It's very difficult to explain, and I get that. But what we need to do is, is moving forward, I mean, it's, it's, and like I said, it's, it's these two narratives, okay? We need to understand now what happened, because we, we're going to write reports about this. This is all on video. This is all going to go forward into this trial. This is inevitable. We, I can't change this at this point. This is, a roll, this is a boulder rolling down a hill, okay? The only thing I can do is alter the course slightly. And the only thing that I can do at this point, and like I said, I think you're a good guy. I've talked to you. You're a nice guy, okay? I don't think that you were a cold-blooded killer who came down here with the explicit intention to murder her, okay? I don't think that's the case, okay? But right now, I, I can't say otherwise. I can't say that there was an accident because you're not telling us something other than that, okay? We have all this evidence, and then we also have things that are not consistent, okay? We're having inconsistencies where there's still holes. Even after all of this, there's still holes in the story that we can prove through evidence that what you're telling us is not completely true. And that continues to make it look like even having understanding that this, this has happened and it was out of your control and we know what happened, you're still trying to tell us little lies about what happened so that it makes you look better. And unfortunately, that's, that's not going to help you because any lie at this point is going to make you look bad. And it's going to tip that boulder right back to the, everybody thinking, oh, well, he's a liar. He's a cold-blooded murderer. He came down here to kill her. And they're going to put you on, you know, like these posters with all these, you know, serial killers and stuff like that. That's not where you need to be, okay? Sometimes people just make mistakes. Sometimes accidents happen. Sometimes things get out of control. And that's understandable. But you have to tell us that story. We have to understand what happened so that we can tell that story. Because once, I, once we're done here, we don't make any more recordings. We don't write more reports. Once I put in my report, whatever happened, that's, that's set in stone because that's what you told me. Whatever your words are, that's what, we can, that's what we take to court. That's going forward what you told us about what happened. That's what you told us uh, the truth was, okay? And if we come back and show that, hey, that's not the actual truth, then again, that just looks horrible for you, and that starts telling that other narrative, all right? So I think that you were there when she was injured and that she was injured in some way that was not a direct attack from you, but I think that you have more information about what actually happened to her, because I know you were in the house with her when it happened. Is that true? No. Okay. No. Listen, we, I know, and you tell me that, okay, and you're using very specific language. So tell me, I'm not saying that you laid a hand on her, but I know that you were there when she was injured. So you need to explain to us how it was she, be, she became injured. Because, because this whole thing where you came back from the gas station and you just found her like that, I know that's not true. I, and I can prove that's not true. Okay? And I don't want that for you. I don't want you to be locked into this story where you're telling us a lie about how she became injured. Because if you lie about how she became injured to me right now, then that makes it look like you did it on purpose. And, well, and that's not the story that I want to tell, okay? And I want you to be able to tell the story about what actually happened and for the truth to get out there. The only thing that's going to help you at this point is the truth. And, and I know that the truth is not that you came home and you found her after you went to go get gas for her. I know that's not the truth, okay? And I need you to tell us the truth so that I can tell the actual truth when we go to court because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to find out the truth about what happened. I'm not... I'm not here to try you. I'm not a jury. I'm not a judge. I'm not a, a lawyer, okay? I'm a detective. A detective's my sole job is to find the truth about what happened. Because once I'm done with my job, I can write the truth in my report, and I can be satisfied that I understand the entire truth. But if there's something that doesn't add up, if there's something that I know to be a lie, 
I have to keep digging at it. I keep digging at it and keep digging at it. And I have to bring that up in court because they're going to ask me, is this the whole truth? Is this what actually happened? And I'm going to have to say, I have evidence contrary to that. I know that that's not what happened. I know he's lying. Okay? But the only person who is in that house who can tell us what happened to Tricia is you. Because Faith obviously can't tell us what happened. But if you don't tell us the truth about what happened, it just continues to make it look like you're lying to us to cover up something more sinister, for lack of a better word. Like you intended this to happen, and now you're covering it up. And I don't want that to be the story. It's not the story. And I know. And that's why I want you to have this opportunity to tell me the, the truth about how she became injured, how, that, how Trisha lost her life. Yeah, you, you, you do. You do. You do. Okay? And I know that you were in the house. Like I said, didn't do anything I, can, her, I can prove. But I didn't do anything to her. And I, you're not, you're not hearing me. Do. Okay, you're not hearing me. Okay? I'm not saying that you did anything to her on purpose. I'm not saying that you hurt her. I'm not saying that you laid hands on her. Okay? But I do know that you know what happened to her. I know that you know what happened to her. I know you were in, I know you were in the house. I know it, okay, and I can prove that. And I don't want to have to get up on the court and in the, in, on the on the jury in the in the stand and explain to the jury that even after giving the opportunity to tell me the truth about what happened, to, to tell me the truth that you're not this cold-blooded murderer who came down here to kill her. We never do that. It, you can tell me that, but you continue to tell me a lie about what happened. You continue to tell me a lie about how you found her dead how she came to be injured like that. You, and I know I don't want that to be the last thing that we hear about this. I don't want the last thing that you're able to tell us is this lie about how she got hurt because that is the most important piece of this. There's no question that she was killed. There's no question that she was taken out into the, the woods. But the problem is that the narrative is, was that the actions of someone who was panicking and a jury could yes. completely understand this? I did. I didn't know what to do. I but, don't, I don't so, plan this. So explain to me. I don't, me, know, I, how, I don't I, know what you do in these situations. And I know you didn't plan this. And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to give you the opportunity to explain to us how it happened that it, because it was not planned. You did not no. attack her. You did no. not try Never. to kill her or try to come down here to kill her. Never. But things happen. And I, we need to understand what it was that happened in that house before the whole gas thing. I know it happened before the gas thing. I know it, it happened before you went to the, this computer thing. I, I know that's not the truth. I can, I can prove that this is not the truth. I need to know the truth to, to be able to tell people that, that you're not a serial killer, that you're no, some not. psychopath who has no remorse over killing the mother of your child. But you know that's what's going to be in the paper. You know that's I what's going to... change that, unfortunately. You can. You can change that. You can change that right now. No, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can't tell you anything other than what I've told you. No, you can tell and, me the truth. And that's the problem. And nothing, I, nothing, nothing makes it better. Nothing I say makes this it, better. It will. And because, it doesn't matter. Because there's a huge difference between we got an argument, it got physical, she started it, she got hurt. That's not that's, that's, any better. That's, that's no, no better. No, tell me. the same scenario. That is, still, miles, that is miles better than I came down here with a backpack, with a backpack full of tools ready to kill her and drag her out and her lifeless body into the woods. It was just clothes. It was just the clothes that didn't You heard, you heard the narrative that you told. You told to, you told us more I had a bag, I had clothes, yeah. I had water, yeah, I had not snacks. already in there. What? No, I'm saying you got the bag, and then after all this is done, all this messy business is finished. Now you get rid of that. That looks awful. I know, that looks I like that looks like that. a murder bag. That looks like oh my gosh, she but came down here with was. this bag, and I don't think it was. What? I think it was just a bag it, that you had it with some stuff in it. Yes, that's but you literally need, what it was. Just but you need to explain stuff that I already had. But if that's the case, you need to explain the how she got hurt. Okay, now, and I, listen to me. I know, I know this is my job. Okay, 
I know when I when the truth is coming out, and I know when somebody's trying to dance around the truth, and I know when somebody's trying to skip over things. Okay, and I know that's what's happening here, and I don't blame you because it's scary, because you don't want to have to think about what happened again, and because you think it's good, it's going to make you look bad once we know actually what happened. But I'm telling you right now, whatever happened before, you know, I'll tell you right now, if you came down here with a murder bag and you planned on killing her and burying her out in the woods and hopefully we would never find her again, that's, that's not going to look good, okay? Stupid plan. But I don't think that's... Yeah, I don't bury someone in the woods. I don't find that. That's why they do all this searching. And, and I don't think that was the plan. But the thing is that if, if you leave that empty space for everybody to make up this story about what actually happened and why you were down here and what actually happened to Trisha and your intentions, you know that's what people are going to come up with. And you know, you know that's what everyone's going to say. So you need to take, take the opportunity now to set everybody straight to tell us what actually happened in the house. And because sit here and tell you that she attacked me, that's just another different story that you're just going to be like, well, that's five different stories you're telling now. I, and that doesn't help either. So what do you want me to tell you? What do you want me to tell you, Dave? I want you to tell me the because truth. I'm telling you, I didn't hurt this woman. Okay. I never did anything to injure her or hurt her. My only mistake is I didn't, I didn't, just, I didn't just accept that this is the situation and call 911. That's what I should have done. Did, did I, she I attack didn't you? take her to the hospital. I should have just did that. Instead, I just panicked and I just tried to... I just tried to get away from it all. Is what I wanted. I just wanted nothing to do with all that. But you because panicked. Not me. And I just panicked. I just you panicked, panicked because of what happened. Because you thought it would come back on you. Because it did. It does. Like in the past, even I didn't do anything to her. But just but people, because of how it. But looked. here's the thing. People fall down all the time. People get hurt. Okay. It's not uncommon. Okay. And that. And we can. We can find that out. That's. That's not something that's difficult to determine. Okay. There's people that get go to a lot of school and they get paid a lot of money to figure out exactly what happened to somebody, okay? And I know you don't believe that, and I know you, you were panicking. I get that. But I know that what you're telling us about coming back from the gas station, I know that's a lie. I know that's a lie. And I can prove that's a lie. And I don't want that to be the last lie that you tell us. I need you to tell us tell the truth. I can't tell you anything else because I don't know anything else to tell you. You do. And I know, you, I know you do. Else, it's another story. And no matter what I tell you, it's not going to be the truth according to you. So you, what do you want me to tell you here's then? The, here's the thing about the stories, okay? Every time you tell us some version of what happened, it gets closer to the truth. And I appreciate that. because so you, then I say, oh, yeah, she attacked me. And you come back in here like, okay, so you attacked her. Like, no, that's not what I said. So then you're just going to have me going down this rabbit hole of different stories now. I don't want that either. Like I, I, like I told you, okay, I, I can prove I can prove one thing, okay? I can prove that you were at the house with Trisha when she was injured. I can prove that. So the question lies with you as to you're the only one who was there with her. Like I said, you're the only person who can tell us what happened. So this is your opportunity to tell us what happened in the house before you left because that's when I know she was injured, and I can prove that. What I need to know is what happened in the house. Because I know what you're telling me is a lie, and I can prove that. But if you stick with that story and I can prove that it's a lie, everyone's going to assume the worst. They assume the worst? No. If, I, if I sit here and say, yeah, we argued, she attacked me, then they're just going to assume, okay, you being the bigger, stronger person, you hit her or you did something to her or you, you in some way hurt her, and that... I never, ever would do I'm, that. I'm not asking, you to, I'm not asking you to make up a story. Murder bag. I didn't come down here with some dubious plan. I didn't. I, exactly. I'm not that kind of person. And that's, and that's what I'm saying, is that you're not that type of person. But by continuing to lie to us about what happened and when it happened, you're opening that door for everyone to assume it. And you know everyone's going to assume it. They already I do. Know. They I don't assume that. If I thought that was the case, I wouldn't be in here talking to you right now. Because if I thought you had this murder bag and you came down here with the express intent to kill Trisha, no. I'd be like, you know what? Never. There's no sense in talking to this guy. He's a psychopath, no. and he's and he's not even he's not worth anybody's but time. That's why we're divorced. But I'm not going to murder the woman. But I'm not going to. That's that's why I want to come in here and talk to you and try to give you the opportunity to set the record straight and tell us the truth about what happened with Trisha. Because I know what you're telling us right now is a lie. And I don't want you to be stuck in this lie. Because once I write it in my report, it's done. This is what Stephen told us 
and that's it. But I can prove that's not true. That's not how I want to end this report, because everybody wants to know what happened to Trisha. If Trisha had an accident, if Trisha came at you when she fell, she clearly had an accident because I didn't do anything so, to her. I'm so what, you I didn't do So what happened? I never hurt her. I never, I didn't push her. I didn't shove her. I didn't do anything to that woman So to what? Hurt her. So what happened? I didn't do anything. I'm not saying you did anything. But I'm asking, not. that's not the question I'm asking. The question is, what happened? Because, like I said, I know you were in the house when it happened. I know you were there. I can prove that you were there. And if you don't tell me the truth about what happened now, then you're going to have to forever live with the fact that you lied about it, and then it's going to come out in court that we know he was in the house, and he's lying about it, and that looks awful. That looks like you knew exactly what you were doing, that you need to cover this up because what you did was so horrible that nobody would understand it. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case at all. Then why even go with that if you know that's not the case? I'm not, saying, that I'm not saying that's what I think. I'm telling you, you know that's what everybody else is going to think. You know that once this thing gets on CNN and Fox News, I mean, they're going to put, they they're they're gonna put your they're going to put your mugshot up there. Regardless and of what I you think. leave that void. You leave that void where they can tell whatever story they want. They're going to tell because you're going to regardless of what I tell them. Not the, it doesn't the matter news, what the I news, say. The news is not going to lie about something. Yeah, they, will. they won't because they can get in big trouble. If you, if we have evidence that you said that you know, she attacked you and that it was an accident or something like that, whatever the narrative is that you tell us, and we can say, you know what, this is, this is the closest thing that we can get to the truth. We believe this to be the closest thing to the truth because you can never find the absolute truth. It's very, very difficult, okay? But the thing is that if we're sitting here and we can know that you're lying to us, that leaves this giant gaping hole where anybody can put whatever they want in that. Because a lie is a lie. It's not the truth. If we know, well, that's not the truth, sure. what goes there? What fills in that spot? A murder claim. That's, I, I don't think you did. I had no, there was I don't no think plan. you did. I didn't have a murder bag. I don't think you did. I don't, I I don't think, know anything about this you know, I don't know. You know it looks like it, that. Oh, it looks bad it looks from the get-go. And that's bad. why I panicked from that's the get-go, because why, it looks so bad. But you need to take this opportunity to tell me the truth. Because I, I don't want you to have to live with the fact that you lied to us about this whole gas thing it is, and coming back and find it. There's no, there's no point. There is a point. Now. There is a point. Because this is a huge difference. Because, because someday in the not-too-distant future, you're going to not, not, don't worry about the media. Don't worry about what your friends and family are going to think. Worry don't worry about, about all that stuff. Really not you're going to have a jury. That's my deciding point. your I fate. I feel like no matter what I tell you, it's not going to make no. a difference with them. It's going to make if a I huge difference. If I sit here and tell you another story of we had an argument and fought, then they're going to be like, well, what happened to the other two, three stories he told? Why wasn't this the story? Because you were scared. I'm and I scared understand you're scared. Now. I was scared then. I'm scared now. You've been scared throughout this entire thing. Your actions look like somebody who's planned this and look like somebody who came down here to murder you. But I can yes, see they're actually the actions looks like. of and someone who was scared. But you need to explain to them that you didn't just come home and you saw that she fell down and you got scared. That's that that doesn't make sense to a jury. They're not that's they're not gonna buy this. They're not gonna believe you. I don't and they're not gonna buy anything. They're gonna believe the truth. They're gonna believe the truth. All of it from the get go was just just unbelievable to me. All of it from the get go was one of those like I'm living a nightmare. I'm living some shitty lifetime movie special is what I'm living and it's Bullshit, because I would never hurt that woman. I would never... So tell us, so tell us Ill what actually happened Ill in the house. Her? No. What actually happened in the house. You need, you, the only way that we're going to be able to move forward from this is for you to... to because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm being straight up with you. I'm being honest with you, okay? I've done this investigation. I have all this forensic evidence, okay? We have a bunch of people who have gone through all of this forensic evidence, and we can see what you're telling us the truth about and what you're not telling us the truth about. And I can tell you right now, the biggest glaring lie is that I know that you're lying about that she, she was already on the ground when you came home. I know that's not true. I know that's not true. And I can prove that in a court of law to be not true. So you have to take this opportunity. I'm giving you this huge clue. Hey, you need to tell us what actually happened here. Because if I can prove that you're lying, 
Now you're, you're going to leave it in the hands of a jury, of a bunch of people who have been watching the news about what they talk about you, and then you're going to let them decide and fill in that hole about what happened to Tricia. You think they're just going to say, oh, yeah, she must have just fallen down and bumped her head. You think that's what they're going to think? No. No. No, because you're not telling them what actually happened. You're not telling me what actually happened. I just feel like if I do, then it's just another story. It's so just another story of what happened. It's, it's another version everything, of what happened. Everything is a story. BS. Everything, everybody and has their own... It goes into like the docket file of, well, we can't believe a word this guy said no. now because no. you lied because in the beginning, you lied in the middle, and now you're probably still lying in the end. No, because and, we need to understand, because... I, I don't want to leave you here hanging out here with this lie, this glaring lie that I know is not, is not the truth. Because if you take this opportunity to talk to me, I will listen to you. I will listen. I will believe your truth. It doesn't matter if okay. you believe me. It does. No, it doesn't. Who do you think writes this report? Who do you think has to defile all this stuff to the state attorney? I understand. Myself, the other detectives. That's, we have to listen to you. That's my job. Mind made up about no. Me. If I had, like I said, if I had my mind made up. I came here with some murder back. If I had my mind made up. I would not be in here talking to you right now because I don't believe I talked to you earlier. We had a good conversation about the Air Force and all the cool stuff that you've done, the cool places you've been. Yeah, you're a good guy, okay? I, I think you're a nice guy. I don't think you're this cold-blooded murderer, okay? But you're not giving us the opportunity to tell the story that actually happened. I know you do. I know you do. The plan is not. But with Trisha, with Trisha, things always go sideways with her. You try to do the right thing with her, and then she's off cheek on you with some other dude. You try to do the right thing with her, and then she's pushing your buttons up against the wall with this key thing, and she gets you in trouble. And then the next thing I know, I saw that she was she's talking to your your commanding officer's wife or something about you being with his girlfriend. I saw all this stuff. She's always pushing your buttons. She's always... I always just trying to do the right thing. And you are thing. trying to do the right thing. Try to be a good okay? person. And then here it is. You're trying work. to be a good person. And it's still not working. And she not comes in. Work. And here she comes and to take care of Faith. Worse because worse. Faith is just... I mean, and Faith is sick. I get that. That's, I have a kid. Okay? And not much older than Faith. And that her. is a stressful thing. Never to have otherwise. to deal with a kid. At the middle of the night who wants their mommy, and they will not take no for an answer. She wouldn't. That's stressful. That's, and I, I just felt like, that would, like, who am I to deny you your mother? That would push anybody's buttons. That would put, get anybody on edge. Uh, trust me, I've been there. Sometimes my kid starts screaming, I want my mommy, I want my mommy, and it's like, upset with my daughter. I, I know. I just said, I don't get, ups I don't get upset no, with it. I never honestly, upset with her. Honestly, it, it makes me feel a little upset. At myself, because why am I not good enough for well, my, my own daughter? Right. You know? I'm not there enough, and I know that. I wish I could be there more, but I, I can't. It's just the circumstances. I, I can't change that, you know, how often I can be there. So I just do what I can. But, no, I'm not upset that she wants her money. No, That's and, fine. and I get that. And I get that. And so you try to be the, again, you're trying to be the nice guy. Trying you're to trying to do the right thing. Do right for, thing. for your daughter now, yeah, for Faith, you care I'm about her. Do. You want to talk to her all the time. She wants her mommy. You know what? You don't really like Trisha. You don't want to see her in the middle of the night. You don't want her to come back over. No, but you know what? You will make that sacrifice for your daughter. Of course I would. And then when she shows up, she probably got an attitude. What? What? I mean, what's her deal? I'll never know what her deal is. She always has her own agendas. I don't. I just try to ignore them. I just. I just pretend that whatever she says, it's just take it as a grain of salt and move on. I don't, and, and I know she's got. I don't feed into it. I don't. I don't ask questions. I don't answer things. I just. I just smile and nod kind of thing. But sometimes she won't, she won't take that. Well, no, that's just her personality. And she's going to keep pushing. Well, because she's, got, she's got to end the conversation. And she's got to get to some her. resolution. And I let her. And I she's going to keep prodding and poking about whatever the stupid thing is that she's upset about. Okay? And I get that. Okay? We, we all understand that. We've all been there. Okay? So, and, and I understand how this... The, the, the kind of the atmosphere of that night, and I can't, I can't blame you, okay, for panicking after all of this. Okay, but you got, but the right Stephen, Stephen, but I, but I want to tell you right now, okay, you need some guidance sometimes. You weren't sure what to do. I can tell you right now, the right thing to do is to tell us what actually happened. It is. It's gonna. It's. It's going to help you enormously. It's. It's. I, I know you think that the truth is gonna is gonna make it look so much worse. Okay. But it. 
I can tell you right now, the truth is never anywhere near as bad as what people will believe if you let them come up with their own story. No one believes I hated her. I never hated her. I didn't. So like tell her. me. I didn't hate the so woman. tell me that story. I cared about tell it. me what happened. Tell me what I happened so that I can I can it tell. Wasn't ever possible, and, but it was. And that. you tried, and I know you did. Even after she was off with this other dude, you tr you brought the family back together. You had a child with her to try to create this happy family. Even though you didn't really want to, but you you did. You tried so hard. Okay, and I get that. And I get that. And I appreciate that. I think you're a good guy. You're a family man. You're trying. You're trying to do the best that you can. Okay? You got a, you got a career. Okay? You provide. You're a good guy. I mean, especially, you know, there's a lot of people that, that you know, they don't, even, they don't even try. They abandon their kids. They, they don't get a job. They're out drink, drinking, doing drugs, all kinds of shit. But you're you're not that guy. Be the right, do the right thing, and be a good person, and try to be a good father from a distance, I guess. I, and you did, know. and you were doing a good job, okay. But sometimes people throw monkey wrenches into your plans, okay. And you're trying to do the best that you can. You're trying, and I can see that. And I, like I said, I've seen all your guys' communication, all your text messages, and how you talk to each other, and. She was she was trying you. I mean, she would. I mean, you wanted to talk to your daughter. You wanted to be there for your because you don't want to just abandon your child. No, you don't want her to not have a ch have a father. You're to doing a good job as best as I could. You and know, so, I know, like, because of the military and her living in Florida, I can't always be there. But yeah, I'll try to be there as much as I can. And that's why that night, you gave in. You said yes. I know. I have a daughter. Daughters always get what they want, no matter what. They always get what they want, no matter if you don't want it or not. She wanted mommy, she's getting mommy, yeah. even though you didn't want that. So I know that your plan was not, I mean, you, I mean, how ridiculous is that? You planned to have a sick child? You planned to have your child call for the mother in the middle of the night? Planned to take a stupid trip to the but hospital? People are no. going to believe that if you let them. They're going to believe. How do you plan you, that? How do you so, plan for your child to be sick in the so, middle of the night? So I know you, you think don't. that the truth is going to sound worse, but you know it's not. You know it's not going to sound worse. You know it can't be worse than this narrative that people are creating about you. It's only that people are already saying everything that. else already. I've already told too many different freaking versions. You told you mean. told versions because you panicked. Because you were scared. People can understand that. People can understand that. But at a certain point, you have to realize because you're afraid. You're afraid that you're going to get prison for caught. You're going to get blamed. You're going to get. You're going to get in trouble. But I can tell you right now, we're there. We're there. My life. Okay? You're, you're here with us, not be, because of what happened. And we need to understand the truth about what happened. Because I know you're scared. I know you're scared about what's going to happen in the future. But before you were panicking because you didn't want anybody to know you were involved. You didn't want anybody to know you were there. You wanted it to go away. Oh, that wanted. that is a normal human response. That's what anybody would do in that situation. That you're panicking. You're panicking. That's that's a that's a it's a reasonable that's a reasonable thought process that people can understand. But what we can't get past is you continuing to, to lie about what happened. And I can't let you continue to lie about what happened. I need you to tell me the truth about what happened. I know you were there. I want to give you the opportunity to tell me what happened. I know you didn't, but you, you, you've got you've got to clear this off you. I can see this is this is not something you can carry around. It's 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 not something that's can, you can weigh that weigh you down for the rest of your life. How many, so many times did it say the truth or talk to a counselor? I don't even know what to tell them. I don't even know how to tell them. I don't know, and and it's impossible for somebody who's outside to understand sometimes. But you you've got to let us know the truth about what happened so that you can move past this. For yourself, you've got to, you've got to wait, get this weight off of your shoulders because it's going to destroy you. And you can't, you can't let that happen to yourself. You, you've, 
regardless of what happens from here, you still have a daughter. You are still a father. You still have somebody you're responsible for. Okay? Well, and you I can't... You, in, at this point, I'm in one, one way or another, I can't... I, no, that's not true. It's, and, 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 and don't think that's the truth, okay? I can't guarantee you what's going to happen. Okay? I, it's not up to me. But what I can do is I can tell you that we need to know the truth. That faith needs to know the truth about what happened. That everyone, the families, they need to know what happened. Because you cannot let everyone else make up their story. Do you want Faith to come up with some story? Do you want her to believe these stories that people are going to spin about you because you continue to lie to us about what happened that night? I know you were there. I know you know the truth. You need to tell us so that we can just put a pin in this and say, now we know the truth. It does. It does. It's going to because because it cannot it cannot get worse than what people make up. I tell you that I, you would not believe people's imagination. Well, you would, but I mean, people's imaginations will run wild, and they will come up with the most horrific things. I don't even know where it just just I don't know. It just, just happened. It talk just talk happened. to me about from midnight. You texted her face. Face, face was upset. I would have never texted her otherwise. It was right. already late, and she had already left. I would have never texted her. And you're a good dad, so you wanted her. You wanted to give Faith what she wanted. That's it. That's all I was trying to do was just be a good dad. Just okay. You want your mom? Fine. Like I'm not gonna deny you that. You know. Mm -hmm. So so I text. Yeah, Faith wants you. You know, to come by. That's fine. And then no, I never liked her around. I never liked being in a one-on-one -on -one situation with her because I could never predict her. I don't know the version of her I'm getting at that moment. And so, no, I never like being in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just right. because, just like now, there's always someone who's my word or her word or whatever. And <laughs> I can't change how things freaking look. Right. So, yeah, she came over and she was with Faith. And then she just started talking about nonsense and bringing up child support and just more stupid stuff that I just, for the most part, tried to ignore. And then... Yeah, there was a mix-up with the check, but that's not my fault because you told me this was your address. So, yeah, that's where I mailed it to. And then she's telling me that's not the mailing address. It's just, so what am I, I'm like, that's not my fault. If you told me you moved, I did the responsible thing, and I made sure the check was going to go wherever you moved to if you're not at your mom's house. And then she's just going on and on about now I owe her more money and back child support. And, just, and I'm just sitting here like, then I'll fix it. I'll send you another. I'll do something, but I don't have the money now. So just... Give me some time, like, because that money, since you didn't get it on time, is already spent. I spent it to come here, and now I need a little more time to get it to you. And now she's talking about how she's going to go to court and all this other stuff, and it's my fault. And I'm just like, this isn't even my fault. Like, you told me you moved, so I adjusted it. Like, just calm down. Like, this isn't even that serious. This is an easily rectifiable why are you getting all out of hand about this, you know? Right. And, and, and yeah, I know I didn't go through the court to pay child support, but every time I tried, it was just, she just stonewalled me. It's like, I don't want to do that because I haven't paid money to send you money, which is stupid. I was like, just let me have your account information, just, a, just the account number, and I will direct deposit it, and this will never happen. And no, that was, that's not going to work, and you can't do that. You owe me all this money. And then she's going to go to court and make me pay all the other money from the divorce that I already took over ten thousand, like twenty something thousand dollars in debt that I was trying to pay back in 18 months. And then if I don't pay all that back, I got another six thousand dollars I got to pay as far as back child support. And now she's trying to say I'm going to have to pay all that back. And then she just gets in my face about it. And I'm like, what? Why are you so mad right now? Like, I, is it because I called you this way? It just, it just completely got out of hand. And then just the whole pointing and the, the I just, it just all went bad. It just so fast. She just went from zero to a hundred and I'm trying to understand like what just happened. Like you were just here earlier. Everything was fine. You left. I only called you because Faith wanted you and now we're arguing about something that I'm sitting here thinking this is unbelievably trivial and this can be fixed. I can fix this by the first. Just give me time I'll make sure you get the money, or I'll make it in two separate payments, or whatever you need me to do, and it's just not, it's just not good. It's not going to work. None of this works. 
So then, we, you know, we, we leave Faith on the couch. And she eventually falls asleep anyway, but she's still, like, arguing with me over in the, the, the foyer area. And I'm just like, just please just leave then. Just go. No, I'm not leaving until we fix this. Like, just, just get out. Like, I don't... I don't know what you want from me, Trisha. I don't have any money for you. I don't have any cash for you. I can't give you anything right now. I spent the little money I had, which is why I drove here just to see Faith. That's why I didn't fly. I didn't get a rental car like I normally do. I'm not in a hotel. Well, I didn't want to do the hotel thing, but I don't have money. Like, mm-hmm. I just I paid so much money to the debt that I don't have any more money, okay? I just don't. I am, like, pretty much strapped when it comes to cash. I'm going to be paycheck to paycheck, and even then, I'm not making it right now. And it's just, it's just, it doesn't matter. You owe me money. You need to pay your debts. This is always your fault. You're always spending more money. And it's just on and on and on to the point where now I'm just trying to, like, walk away. And now I can't walk away because you're circling me and, like, you're jumping in front of my face. And you just, it, it just got so aggressive. And I'm just trying to back away and de-escalate. And I can't even leave the house now. You know, I don't want to push you. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to anything with you because all I'm having, I'm just thinking about flashbacks of before. When you just blew all this this shit up for no reason, and then now I'm getting arrested, but only after the fact did you go and you know say that it wasn't my fault. No, no one else knows that now, but only after the fact that I got arrested. All I'm thinking just and just flashbacks. So I moved, I go to push her away, and then she gets really pissed about that, and then she gets even more aggressive and in my face and pushing me back. And I'm like, would you please just stop? Like. I don't want, I don't want this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why you're so mad. I don't know if you, if you took a freaking crazy pill on the way over here and that really pissed her off and uh, it just, it just escalated and then I just moved her away and then she slipped and that's when she freaking fell and I'm like, oh shit, I asked her if she was okay. It was like a weird sound. She didn't say anything though and then I freaking panicked and then I, I just freaking panicked. Because I didn't read, I didn't try to hurt you. I just wanted you to stop being here in my face, yelling at me as I'm trying to back away. I'm trying to de-escalate. I don't want whatever this is. It's not. It's not this serious. I don't know why it's so serious about this money. It's always been so like, even throughout the divorce, every penny has just been so serious about her trying to get every dollar. Right. And I'm like, and now I made a mistake and I sent the check to the wrong address because I didn't know that wasn't a mailing address. And I, I can't explain where it is. I didn't even get it back in the mail until a week after that. And it just, it just went so fast. And then I pushed her. And I didn't even push, push. I was just trying to get her away. Just please stop yelling She's in my faint. face. It's like, just, you know, like, if she was at that distance, fine. But she wasn't. She's just right here the things. whole time. And I'm like, please, just stop. And so I went to move her away. And she slipped. And she hit her head. And I didn't mean for that. That wasn't my freaking fault. I wasn't... And then all I'm thinking is, great, now I've pushed her, and she's hurt her head, and, and I'm done. I'm just, everything I've tried to do, everything I've tried to be, is done, because I made a mistake. I didn't even really even lose my cool. I just tried to move you away. I just didn't, I didn't want to hurt I just tried to de-escalate the situation because I couldn't get out. I didn't know where to go. I didn't even just leave. Like, all I wanted to do was just leave. I just wanted nothing to do with that. Do you know what she hit her head on? Was it the floor or...? I don't know. It just, she just fell. And then she just she wasn't responsive after that. And I didn't want to help this <laughs> You know, I thought I was going to call the police now. I was going to say, I freaking pushed her head. I'm going to check. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what were you, what did you do next? I just tried. I like I just tried to wake her. I tried to like snap her out of it, and it just it just kept getting worse. She just she just wasn't responding. Her she had she made weird breathing sounds, and I'm thinking, oh shit, I'm going to jail. Like I'm going to jail for killing this woman that I never wanted to hurt. Never. And I don't think you did. I, I never think wanted her to be hurt. I, I never wished ill on her. I tried to always do right by her, no matter what the situation. I just tried to do the right thing. You know what I mean? I'm going to jail for, for trying not to hurt you. <laughs> and that's, I mean, and that's exactly why I wanted you to tell me the truth about that. I just wanted now. it to stop. I wanted it to go away. 
I just wanted to just go back. I just <laughs> okay. And 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 that I believe you. I believe everything that you just told me. Okay, Stephen. That doesn't even matter. <laughs> it does. It makes it makes a huge difference because that's that's what we need to do. We need to get to the truth about what happened. Now you know you know the next question I'm going to ask you. Okay. And I know you don't want to, don't but we need to know where know. Trisha is. I don't know, and the, uh, I, I really know. don't have a freaking clue where that was. I but just, I just, I just panicked, and I just drove. And I know, and I, I, I know. I went through a million and one scenarios in my head of what to do, and none of them were good. All of them just ended bad. You know, okay. I, just, I didn't pay attention to anything. I just drove, and as I drove, I just. I didn't, I didn't read any signs. I didn't. I just drove, and I just tried to think about a fix it. And I couldn't fix it. And it was just bad all around. And I'm just like, no matter what, I'm screwed. Like I am screwed, no matter what. I can't go back. I can't. I can't go to the hospital now. If I do, how does that look? I don't even know what to do at this point. I'm just freaking out because I didn't want any of this. I didn't want anything to do with any of that. I'm scared to death. I get it. I understand. <laughs> All right. And Stephen, I wanna I wanna help you do the best you can from here. Okay. And I know shit happens. It does. It does. It happens to good people. Okay, it doesn't make you a bad person. But I don't know where she is, and I can't take her to where she but is, and I'm so screwed. We got to try I to can't remember. Remember that I don't know where that was. I just okay. it was just a random place. I had no idea where I well, was. Let me let me try to let me just try to understand through the rest of the the evening. Okay, the 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 first the first that you said you went through several scenarios. I just tried to figure out what I was going to do. I didn't know what to do. I just. Panic. The first just scenario. Fear and panic is all I had. Just panic and sheer fear because I just this is not what I wanted with my life. I didn't. I just tried so hard to do so good and to fix the shit that was wrong, and it was a uphill battle. But I was fixing it. It was getting fixed. My life was getting better. I had moved on. I had my job. I had my career. I was happy with my girlfriend. I just everything was fine. I was so <laughs> so fine, so good. <laughs> That's, it's it's a horrible, horrible accident that sometimes these times these types of things happen, and they happen to good people. And we got to try to get through to do the best that we can from here. Okay. Well, let me let me just understand the rest of the night. So you told us your first idea was to go take her in the car to her house, right? Take her home and just. But then you saw what Joshua was. There. I just saw a vehicle. I didn't know whose vehicle that was. I just, I just didn't know what to do. So I just kept okay. driving. I just well, kept is that is that when you went back because it was out of gas or low on gas? Yeah, because I didn't know where to go after that, and okay. I didn't know what to do, and I just called the police then, I guess. But even then, I was like, well, now I've already left, so now what does this look like? Right, and, and it, it just, just snowballed. It just, you know, it got so out of control so fast, and no matter what I thought to do, it just makes work. So. Try to try to help me, and I want to try to help you think through this. You went back, you got the gas, and then you put the gas in the car. Okay. You went out of the neighborhood. Where did you go? Nowhere when you to left. Go. You you went I you went south. You turned drove. you turned right, right? I just went to turn the right, okay. and then it was just we, drove trying to think of what to do and where I know, to go and how, I know. how to make it right, and then every everything was wrong. Everything right. at that point was wrong. And but you, here's the thing, Stephen. I know that you. I know you don't think you remember, but I know you remember. If we can work through this, I think you can figure this out. Okay. I don't so just just place. just work with me for a minute, okay? So you went. Do you, you know where Bridge Road is, right? The main the main road. Yeah. Okay. When you got to the the bridge road that goes to the beach to the left, right? Yeah. Did you turn right or did you go straight? I'm pretty sure I turned right, but it, everything I saw out there doesn't look like anything. It just I don't remember anything that I saw out there. I just remember. It was, Do you remember going under a bridge? I don't know. I just. I just stayed and I just drove and I just tried to think and clear my head and figure it out and 
what now? And then I just realized that I'm screwed. Like, I'm just okay. done. There's nothing I can, I'm just going to prison. Like, screw so, it, I'm going to prison no matter what I do at this point. And just, it just. So you drove for, point. you drove for a while, right? I couldn't explain it. And, and, and I get that, that's a lot to think about. That's a lot to, to carry around with you. Okay. And this has got to have been tough for you these last couple weeks. <laughs> I wanted to tell, but I don't know how to tell it. It's already so and that's, far bad. That's, no, so it's, far it's bad. never too late. It's, it's never too late, okay? And that's why I wanted to give you this opportunity, because the, I want you to tell us the truth. I want you to have that opportunity. But I didn't hurt her. But, I didn't. And he, I never. <laughs> here's, here's what I need. We, I never we have murder so, so many people, so many people are, are looking for her. And want to know where she is. Okay. Will you will you continue to work with us to try to figure out where she is? You will. No. I know. You, I know you don't think you know. But I, know I, don't I need know. you to give us. I need you to give us an honest effort to try to remember. It's just. It's just. It's just, it's just dark. What, so you drove for a while. It was just dark. And let, it was let, dark let, well, hold on, Steve. Let me just let me just talk through this a little bit. Okay. So you drove for a while while you were thinking. Did you turn anywhere? No, Dan. Dan, I just, for a moment, I just spaced. I just, I just saw a road, and I just drove. I didn't want to think. I didn't want anything. I just, it just was just zoned out. Okay. Just nothing. Just okay. So you don't, you just, don't remember sheer fear and panic, and I just don't know what I should do or. Okay. When you get to the, when you get to the end of that dirt road, you turn down a dirt road somewhere. Right? Okay. I, I know you remember this part. Okay. When you get there, what do you see around you? Just stuff. Just was it was grass it, and trees and just nothing. Was it like a was it like a forest? I don't know. It was just was it like a swamp? I couldn't tell you how thick or how far it went. I just was it a, a was it a farmland? Stop. And then I just got out, and then I didn't know what to do. I knew wherever I was at was way too far to walk, most likely. Because I don't even know where the heck I am, right. and it's just dark, and I can't see anything out there. I know there's shrubbery or trees. I don't know how far that goes. I don't know could you what see, it is. Could you see the main road from where you were at all? No, I don't. Okay. Even, it was so dark the other direction. How I long, didn't even know how long do you think you were off the main road? I just, okay. I just, kinda, I just wanted... You, you said before that you, you changed your clothes in a little building. Where was that? In the building. It was... There's some little thing near where I parked your car. I just, I just changed near her house. More clothes behind it. Near her house or near where you left Trisha? Her house. I drove back and then I just. You changed after you drove back. Because I didn't know what else to do and I just like well the bag has clothes I can just put more clothes on and I didn't okay. know what to do I just. It, and Stephen okay here's here's the next thing now I need to understand. When you when you got to where Trisha were ended up, how how did you where did you put her? Okay. I laid her down. Okay. I, I took her out of the car, and I just laid her down. Was she in water? No, she was on the ground. She was, was there water anywhere nearby? I don't think so. I don't. I didn't hear water. I don't. Well, you know how a lot of them have like the little ravines and canals and stuff that run along them. You didn't see anything like that. I didn't notice any of that. It's okay. Just, I just remember it was really Did she... dark, and I just took her out, and she just looked peaceful and sweet, and like what I remember her. You know, the way I would like to remember her. Why don't I ever talk bad about her? I feel, yeah. I feel, I, not like love, love, but I care about her. You had, you had a life like, with this person. I, I lived, I was married 11 years to her. Yeah. Of course I still care about her. And you created a life with this I, person. There's, there's, you're always going to have some peace together. I get that. I get that. No matter what else happens, the money and all that other stuff. I just didn't want anything. And that's, that's why we need to... She just looked peaceful. We need to do everything that we can to, to just, bring her home now. I know what happened happened. I know, and that's done. It's in the past, and that's what I want. And I told you in the beginning, I want to talk about the future with you. I'm, we're done talking about the past. We know what happened in the past. We need to get beyond that. We, we need to find her. We need to bring her home. I don't know. I honestly, honestly, after all this time, every day I sat home thinking, the day I'm, they're going to come knocking on my door. There's no way they're not going to find her. I don't, 
I don't even know where I left her. Did you? I didn't even try to cover her up. I just, right. I just laid her down. So she I was wasn't... hoping beyond belief that she would be okay. I didn't. I just well, didn't... you. I mean, you, you knew she was peaceful. You knew she was at peace at that time. I, I mean, I, I, I know you were hoping. I, was I know you're hoping, so but, but you knew. You knew that was not the case. And it's, it's, it's horrible and it's unfortunate. But like you said, and that's, that's just what happened. And bad things happen. But, so you're telling me you did not cover her up at all? No. I didn't even did think you? to. I didn't even know what to, I didn't know what to do with her. I just, okay. just everything, I thought like, okay, if I bring her back. But then it's like, why did you go anywhere in the first place? And then it's like, if I go to the hospital, then I don't know how to explain to them that I didn't do this to her. And it just all sounds so bad. Okay. I just wanted it all to end. I just wanted this, the whole thing to just stop and just go back. Okay, and I know I know this is tough, and this is something that you don't want to go back to, but I need you to try to think really hard about what it was like there, okay? Because we've got to do this. We've got to bring her home. And I need yeah, you to help us I, do that. If I could take you, I would take you. I know. So I could show you I know, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to help me. Her. I'm trying to help you. To remember what you can. How long did you did you sit in the car once you got there? Yes, I just, I was just that stopped for, and I thought, and then it just it was just, that for a long time that you thought? No idea. I just once I got down to the third road, I kind of realized like I don't even know where the hell I am. I don't even know where this road is going. I just I just kind of stopped after a bit. I just stopped, and that's why I thought it was dusty because when I stopped, the dust caught up or whatever, and then. Mm -hmm. it just, I just didn't know what to do. The next one was in the back of the car, in the freaking back seat. And I okay, try, try, to, try to think. I know you don't want to put yourself there, but put yourself there for a minute and think. Try to look around and tell me. You've, you've got to try to remember what it looked like there. I know it's dark. It's a narrow It's black, but you could tell. Could you, could you see the stars? It was kind of a full moon, mostly full moon that night. Did you see the moon? I don't remember looking for the moon. I never thought to look at it. I just. So that's going to give you a little bit of light at that time. But did you see? Did you see farmland? Did you see animals? I couldn't see anything. I just, just there was shrubbery. There was, you know, there was foliage around, but I don't know what kind of foliage. I don't know how thick the foliage was. But it wasn't real tall. It wasn't like trees, was, real tall trees. There were some. It wasn't like, what are they? What are these pine trees? It wasn't like that. But it wasn't like. They weren't like bushes. I don't. I don't even know what kind of trees there were. I just know it wasn't like it wasn't a forest. Forest. It just. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I just. Was the road was the road straight or did it curve at all? It was straight. I'm pretty sure it was straight. It was just like a straight it shot. It might have had a slight curve or I don't know, just a slight. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's not. I don't know, not like a razor straight. It just. Do you remember passing any buildings? No. no, I couldn't see anything out there, and that's why eventually I just kind of stopped because I, I can't see anything. Like the headlights are on, I can't see anything. I don't know. There's just nothing out here. I, I, okay. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just there's just nothing that. So now you're now you need after after you um, take her out of the car, you need to get back to her place. Okay. I, How? I needed to get back. I didn't even really know where I was going to go at that point. I just. I just so try to think where the heck I was, and I just went back to the road. I just turned around and I went back the direction I came. Okay. And then after now that, think I came about that. The was that road. was that? So you just turned. drove down that one dirty, that one dusty road. I just drove back. And then yeah. you hit the main road. And then I hit the main road, and I figured was I'll that turn left. It was probably Bridge Road again. I don't know. I just figured I would turn left because left made sense. Mm -hmm. And so I just drove, and even then I don't know where. None of that stuff out there made sense because I didn't see anything. It was just road, you know, just road, hard road. And then eventually I knew where I was at because I was back at the main intersection, and like this makes sense. I know where I am because I've seen that main intersection. So from where she was, you turned left and went straight, and eventually came back to the bridge it was road, a hard road and road, so federal I highway. Turned left. Because if it's a hard road, I figured maybe this is back the way I came. Mm -hmm. Left made sense. I just turned left and I drove. And none of it looked familiar. None of it. None of it. 
I didn't see any signs even. I just drove left because I don't know. Just, I just figured left would be back. How long do you think you drove? I know you don't know exactly the time, but was it, you, you can remember minutes? It was just a while. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour? You didn't have that much gas, so I don't think you drove an hour each way, did you? I don't think so. I don't know how long it was. But it was a while. I just remember going left, and I'm on a hard road, so I'll just to follow it to see where it goes. When you came to realize where I am, and I did. And so I was like, well, I'm back in town, and then I didn't know what to do, so I just took it back to her house. Do you remember going under the highway? I go over the highway. No, you just the, the, the bridge go over it. A bridge road? There's the. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's under. Everybody sits under that bridge. <laughs> but yeah, that's the. Uh, just. Over. Do you remember? I thought it was over. But that's that's 95. Do you remember passing 95? I remember going over a bridge. I don't remember under a bridge. It was an over, but I, I don't remember there being under. Do you remember going over a bridge though? I remember over, yes. I think there's a railroad bridge that you go over. I wanted to end the night. I just wanted the whole night to stop. How far past that bridge that you went over do you remember? But did you go a long ways past that? The whole night felt like an eternity. But, but you drove for a while? I mean, just, just try to remember as best you can. Did you, you drove for a while after you went over that bridge? Yeah, I don't know how far. It just felt far. I don't... The worst is to get to Okay. Is there anything else you can remember about where you were at when when you left her? Anything else around? Any anything that you can remember to try to help us find her? I didn't see anything. I just turned around. And yeah, the road wasn't super wide, but I did you know the the three point turn or whatever. But I didn't pay attention to anything when I was there. I just I just wanted to get back. Wherever back was, I just wanted to get back, and I wanted the night to just be over. I just wanted everything to just be done. I just wanted it all to stop. Okay. Um, I'm going to do my best, okay? But you know, you know there's a lot of people that, that love Trisha, too, okay? I know. And I know and that's you didn't. That's why I would never come down. I know you didn't. craziness like that. And I know you didn't want to. I know you didn't want to take her from them. Yeah. I know that wasn't your no, intention. No, I would never do that. And my daughter but, needs her mother. She, but, she, but the thing is that, that that's a result nonetheless. Faith, Trisha's family, all of her friends, the church, there's a whole community, okay? I'd like to give you the opportunity now to write an apology and try to get that off of yourself. I have no idea what I would say. Right? The truth? The truth, because the truth is what that you didn't mean for this to happen, but never, it did, never. and that you're. Are you sorry? That, are you sorry that it happened? Of course, of I course am. Of course you are. Holy crap! I, I wish I could have found another way to de-escalate it, but she just, she just wouldn't let it so, go. She just kept pushing this, pushing the issue, pushing the issue about money, and and I know and all and, the thing is I don't have any money anyway. Like, just wait till the first, and I'll fix it. You know, just. I don't, want, I don't know why it's such a big deal with you. I know. I know. It didn't even make sense. And this is and this is going to be a lot of weight. And this is, has been a lot of weight. I mean, you've carried a lot of this for so long now. It's for weeks. And that's more than anybody can really take. And I can tell you that getting this off your chest and writing an apology to these people saying you're sorry that it happened this way, that you did not mean for it to happen this way, and although it did happen, that you're truly sorry, I think that's going to help lift a lot of weight. Is that something that you'd like to do? I don't feel like a sorry. It means anything it, to anybody. You'd be surprised. The point of a sorry. You'd be surprised. People people want to know that. Of course, I'm freaking sorry. I didn't. Okay, I'll, I'll get you. I'm going to step out for a minute. I'll get you um, some paper, okay? And you can think about if you want to do that real quick, okay? I'll be right back.
Galante, would you like to speak to him? Yes, please. Okay. 